Hello everyone and welcome to the back room. The iMac G4 was known by many as the Sunflower Mac and it was available in 15, 17 and 20 inch models. I bought my 15 inch Sunflower new in 2002 and used it for a number of years in my publishing business. Here you can see the machine running OS X Leopard. But this sunflower hides a secret and if we take a look around the back we'll see what it is. In the rear there's an HDMI port and a 4 pin Molex socket and what you see on the screen is provided by this 2010 Mac Mini. Of course having read the title, seen the thumbnail and clicked on the video you probably expected it was something along these lines. The Sunflower was still going strong until around 5 years ago when it stopped working and closer inspection revealed that a number of chips had blown. I might try to repair it at some point in the future but in the meantime I considered building it into a Hackintosh but then I decided it might be better simply as a universal HDMI monitor. And that's what you see here. This is an easy conversion but there's a lot of confusion on the web about it. Many people have converted the 17 inch variants but there's nothing specific about the 15 inch screen other than suggestions that it's probably the same but a bit different. So I'm going to take my sunflower apart and let you see what I've done. I will also provide pinouts so that you can convert yours easily if you choose. So first things first, let's tear down the G4. Out with the 1970s towel and lay the Mac down so that its screen is protected. Apple's service document for this machine shows a jig being used to hold the computer safely, but you can manage quite well without that. The base plate has four crosshead screws and is intended to be accessible so that users can upgrade the machine's RAM. To go further you'll need a Torx bit to undo the four screws and remove the bottom half of the case. Once inside you'll see the motherboard is attached to the base and above it in the dome is the hard drive and the optical drive. Stripping out the various components is logical and straightforward so I won't go into it in detail here. I put my motherboard aside for a future repair, the optical drive has gone into my spares box and the hard drive is now powering a tray loading G3 that I'll show on the channel in a future video. With everything else stripped out you need to identify two cables, the LCD video cable and the one marked inverter. The LCD cable carries the signals to the LCD panel and the inverter carries the power. The LCD cable has a proprietary plug which attaches to the motherboard. Don't cut this plug off, instead pry it apart carefully with a small screwdriver to free the inner plastic part and then peel back each of the plastic tabs on this using a safety pin. If you use the safety pin to press down on each of the brass pins behind these tabs you can carefully pull out the wires intact. Don't worry about breaking the plastic tabs, this connector is discarded. Repeat this process with the inverter cable. If you try to solder these pins, they uh, can introduce sparkles into the picture. The best way to hook up these signals is to use an HDMI breakout plug or socket, and I elected to use a socket, and you can see it here. Once you have the wires free from their housings, strip the outer insulation from the LCD cable. Inside you'll see a number of coloured wires, including four lots of three with an outer copper-coloured wrapping. These are data zero, data one, data two and data clock. Inside each of these is two coloured wires and a clear wire which is connected to ground. All you have to do is use the pinouts here to connect each of the pins and the job is done. I didn't have a piece of heat shrink tubing large enough so I cut a strip from an old inner tube to cover the breakout board and its connectors. Be aware the pinouts available on various websites are incorrect. 
TMDS VCC is 3.3 volts, not 5 volts for the 15 inch screen. And the pinouts shown here are correct. I used a 4-pin Molex socket and powered the screen from an old ATX power supply. I also used the motherboard as a template to mark and cut out a thin plywood baseboard to mount the Molex and the HDMI sockets securely inside the G4. And that's it, a universal HDMI LCD screen. Thank you for watching and see you next time in the back room.